We started by looking at the 1863 hay rake, and we moved forward to look at the 1921 harvester, on to the 39 and 35 tractors, and then when it was time to move into other machinery, we looked at how the war resulted in the combiner maintainer with all its combined functions. But also the Huber machinery branched out further. And in the space race, in the 1950s and 60s, after the Russians sent Sputnik into orbit and the United States needed to catch up, Marion gets into the game with the only two in the world space crawlers. They're built in Marion by Huber Company under one of the many names it held over the years it existed. And they are built to and, and uh, operated here to make sure they worked. Then they're unpacked, and each crawler took 70 train cars worth of material south to Cape Canaveral, where they were assembled at the Kennedy Space Center. Reassembled, but first they were tested here. The space crawlers, uh, each of them dedicated and completed in 1963, enable the kinds of things that you saw as he panned through the photographs for you here. Every rocket to launch from the Kennedy Space Center ever, every rocket that had to be moved was moved by a Huber crawler. The crawler itself, a massive machine. Uh, it's almost the size of a football field on its flat surface. When it's loaded, it's top speed one mile per hour. <laughs> Unloaded, it can go two and a half. The crawler is on uh, treads that are very much like you'd see on a caterpillar tractor tread if you see a cat tractor sitting in a field, a uh, bulldozer perhaps, except that each of the treads is six feet long and each tread weighs a ton per tread. This machine, um, the, the tra tra tractor crawler, is one of the things that makes the space race possible. If you're not able to move your rocket spout from various launch pads, if you're not able to move your equipment about on the crawler, you don't have a space program in the United States. One of the things that's really wonderful about the Huber Museum is that there's a paper archive as well as an equipment archive. I'm almost afraid to hold this. It's old and fragile. 1969, the moonwalk. They leave the planet, uh, uh, they leave the moon, sorry, and head for home. And they're heading for home with an Ohioan on board, but also, and more to our point, it can't be done without Ohio technology. So many things to look at if you visit the museum and the archive. I'm going to point out just one other that I think is really fabulous. You won't be able to see this very well unless you come to visit. Uh, visitors can arrange um, to make a visit in socially distant settings. But this is a scrapbook made by the family of one of the men who built the crawler. And the scrapbook contains all kinds of uh, color news photographs, for example, but also photographs made by the engineer. All these have been annotated by the family. All these clippings <laughs> honoring a life. Uh, you get a sense of how large the crawler tractor is uh, here as it moves, as the men stand on the, the parts, which would be the moving treads. And of course, it's uh, you can't do much with a video a field trip, but if you come to visit in person, uh, you'll get to see all the treasures of the Huber Museum. Let's tuck this back in. So we've looked at um, some of the social connections to this machinery. And one of the things that I want to uh, kind of wrap up with is that it takes an individual with vision. It takes capital. If you don't have that first success, you don't have the money to create all those supportive services, the library, the fire, the electric plant, um, hiring people in your town. Once you have that first success, you never stop. Over 100 patents for Huber, and some of them really unusual tweaks on things people were already doing, but he figured out how to build a better mousetrap, as the proverb goes. He figured out a way to make more money. On the other hand, there is the problem of becoming a victim of your own success, having to continually find new markets, having to continually sustain those sales, um, and of course the problem when uh, the the Huber machinery is more valuable as intellectual property and people sell off the assets of the company one piece at a time. And this is when uh, the Huber 
in the 1980s ceases to exist as a, a Marian company. But not before. We move 1863 from a hay rake, 1963, the crawler is dedicated, and by 1969, the man on the moon. I hope you'll come visit the Humor Museum when you get a chance, and in the meantime, I hope that this visit has given you a sense of how to look at objects closely and think about the social context they fit into.